Hey everyone, Mitch coming again for the Commander's Core Studio. Welcome to the show. So, really quick, if you haven't seen my most recent episode on Takasia, Takasia, I just pretty much butchered that, I'm sure. I am so sorry. But yeah, please let me know how to say that name in the comments below. Thank you. Uh, anyways, find out why I'm saying no about that commander, but don't leave just yet because on this episode, um... Omniscience? Um, and before we jump into it, they'll blame any of the comments below for, well, um, anything. Uh, especially if I make any mistakes on this episode. But yeah, blame any. Now let's jump into it. And really quick, a big thank you to MTG.Design for existing because, yeah, here's a custom version of the card because... Well, the actual uh, image for the card, for whatever reason, is super teeny tiny, so it's very blurry and hard to read. As you can see, kind of the, the uh, actual like picture is still a bit blurry as well, the art. Regardless, that is beside the point. What is the point is what this card does. One with the multiverse and enchantment for six, blue, blue. And for an enchantment with that high of a mana cost, well, this better be good. You may look at the top card of your library anytime, so that's a good start. You may play lands and cast spells from the top of your library, also good. Also, once during each of your turns, you may cast a spell from your hand or the top of your library without paying its mana cost. There we go. So, this is kind of like a combination of two cards in a way, but yes, with a certain limitation, yes, we'll talk about that. And we'll talk about those exact two cards here in a bit, but my goodness, is this a big splashy enchantment that can provide you an absurd amount of value. Even with just those first two parts, again, you may look at the top card of your library anytime you play lands and cast spells to top your library. There are plenty of other cards out there that essentially do very similar or the exact same thing that can very, very, very much benefit certain decks. I mean, I guess technically if it was in play, it could pretty much benefit any deck. But yeah, certain decks really like that effect. I mean, basically, your library is now an extension of your hand in a way. Because, yeah, I mean, you can just play spell after spell after spell at the top of your library, and yet it's basically kind of just keep drawing cards in a way. Not really drawing, but, you know, use a lot, utilizing card advantage in a different and unique way, again, with that hand extension. Now, with this enchantment itself, of course, on top of that, once during each of your turns, so only once you may do this, but still it's a very, very big effect, you can cast a spell from your hand, or again, the top of your library, for free. Which, of course, I mean, if you've got a spell in your hand or on top of your library that costs, you know, eight or more, um, yeah, you basically just kind of get all the mana back, essentially, from casting this and getting this into play. Though, of course, there are also ways to cheat this out, and of course, commanders that can uh, pretty much do so, and we'll talk about those here in a bit and you know other commanders that might be interested in this as well but of course before we get into those commanders we need to talk about what's probably the inspiration behind this card and of course that would be cards like future sight and yes omniscience Future Sight is an enchantment for two. Blue, blue, blue. So five mana in total. Play the top card of your library revealed. You may play the top card of your library. So kind of like the first two parts of one with the multiverse. Uh, basically, yeah, I mean, it's like more of a downside, you know, having to show what the top card of your library is, having it revealed. That obviously can change uh, the way your opponents kind of view you. Though, obviously, if you've got, you know, one of the multiverse in play, uh, they're probably going to be pretty scared of you anyways. But yeah, again, essentially making your library an extension of your hand, which again can be massive. And then, of course, Omniscience, an enchantment for seven blue, blue, blue. So 10 mana in total. One well, of the multiverse is actually kind of like in between these costs in a way. Regardless, Omniscience is an enchantment for 10 mana. And with that kind of a cost, it has this kind of an effect. You may cast spells from your hand without paying their mana cost. Now, of course, that does not have the limitation of only, you know, one sun each of your turns. So, yeah, there, there's a reason, again, why this one costs 10, whereas one of the multiverse only costs, you know, 8. Only 8. I mean, still a, a ton of mana, but yeah, this is basically, hey, uh, everything you cast from your hand is free. One of the multiverse is, once a turn, you can cast something from your hand for free or something off the top of your library for free, and also you get access to the top of your library. 
So again, kind of like a melding of these two cards in a way. Again, with a you know somewhat of a limitation compared to Omniscience, but still with the added benefit of that future sight. So obviously, I mean, again, one with the Multiverse can make a big impact, a big splashy card that can help save you a ton of mana after you get it out. It can help you cheat mana costs left and right as you go throughout the game and also help provide you a lot of card advantage off the top of your library. This is, you know, one of those kind of must remove cards it is going to be a big target for your opponents. And yeah, it might not matter after you get this out because, yeah, you can do some pretty splashy things. I mean, just consider the play, which, I mean, th these two cards probably work in the same deck. I mean, <laughs> getting one of the multiverse out and then being like, oh, top of my library, Omniscience. Um, I play that. And then, yeah, you get to play all the cards from your hand for free, too. So, yeah, a deck that is running one very well might be running the other. So, yeah, now let's talk about some commanders that specifically might want to consider one with the multiverse. First up, and one of the first ones to come to my mind was most definitely Joyra of the Get To, a 2 2 human wizard that costs one blue red, and she has Pay Two, exile a non land card from your hand, put four time counters on the exiled card. If it doesn't have suspend, it gains suspend. So basically, at the beginning of your upkeep, remove a time counter from that card. When the last time counter is removed, cancel up paying its mana cost with a creature card, it has haste. So, kind of like, hey, instead of actually, you know, playing your, your card, you know, paying the mana for your card, just pay two mana and wait a little bit. So, obviously, this commander can get out a ton of massive cards for very cheaply. I mean, with one with the multiverse, you're going to be saving six mana in total. So, that's going to be worth the wait. And again, when that comes into play, you get to cast even more things for free. You know, even more massive cards. And, and yeah, Joyra, a deck built around this commander, definitely has a ton of massive cards that you're going to love to cast for free at this brand new enchantment that you're also going to want to cast okay okay not not for free i guess but i mean technically you're casting for free but you're paying two minutes ahead of time you know what i mean and next up though how about jacob hawken inspector slash hawkins insight on the front we've got a low to the ground commander a zero two human advisor for just one in the blue which has tap draw card then exile card from your hand face down you may look at that card from long domains exiled you may pay for blue blue if you do transform Jacob Hawken Inspector. And this commander actually turns into enchantment itself with Hawkins Insight on the back. Being your upkeep, exile the top card of your library face down. You may look at that card for as long as it remains exiled. Once during each of your turns, you may play a lander cast spell from among cards exile with this permanent without paying its mana cost. So again, like our previous commander we talked about, well, this commander can cast some pretty massive spells for free. And yeah, one with the multiverse is now. One of those cards that you're definitely going to want to consider for a commander like this to just cheat that out to, again, cheat out even more big things. And also with one with the multiverse, basically, again, being like a future site, being able to see what the top of your library is can definitely impact, you know, your decisions with this card as well. Maybe you play a draw spell before this trigger hits. So, you know, you exile something else and you get whatever else in your hand, just as an example. Moving on, how about the lovely 5 mana commander with Joda Archmage Eternal? You may pay Wooberg rather than pay the mana cost for spells that you cast. So Joda doesn't let you cast things for free, but many times at a massive discount essentially. Though you need perfect mana fixing again, paying 5 mana for one of the multiverse is going to save you mana, obviously, instead of having to pay 8 overall. So you can essentially, you know, in a way, cheat out bigger things into play. Again, you're still paying something, but you're cheating it out. And speaking of cheating, again, yeah, now you can just cheat things off the top of your library and cheat them out of your hand. And yeah, keep in mind, Joda can, you know, give you that cost reduction off of spells off the top of your library then too, with one of the multiverse in play as well. So that can be quite the big play. And again, with Joda, that can happen quite early. Speaking of big plays, though, next up, how about Nira Wild Mage? Nira has, whenever you cast a spell, you may put it on the bottom of its owner's library. If you do reveal cards to the top of your library until you reveal a non-land card, you may cast that card without paying its mana cost. Then put the rest of the bottom of your library in random order. This ability triggers only once each turn. So first up, yeah, I mean, just casting a tiny spell and hitting one with the multiverse off the top of your library can be a huge play that can really turn the game into your favor. Also, when it is in play, I mean, obviously, being able to cast things for free is great, but also, keep in mind the impact that it has with this kind of commander to be able to know what the top card of your library is. Because if you have something off the top of your library that is massive, and maybe you already utilized you know, your free cast from the multiverse, just cast something tiny and then put that on the bottom of your library and be like, 
well, I know what I'm getting, and I'm getting this massive thing for free thanks to my commander's trigger. So yeah, one with the multiverse can definitely fit right into a Nira deck. Next up, uh, okay, probably not for certain Narset builds that are, you know, just all extra combats, extra turns, etc, etc, etc. But yeah, Narset, you know, big stuff deck is definitely one that can work with, you know, one with the multiverse, a 3-2, first striking, hexproof, human monk that has... When Narset attacks, exile the top four cards of your library. Until on a turn, you may cast non-creature cards, exile Narset this turn without paying their mana cost. So again, yeah, hit something massive like you know. Want the multiverse off the top. Get into play for free. Cast even bigger things for free out of your hand or off the top of your library. And again, like I mentioned with Nira, knowing what's on top of your library can definitely benefit you for a commander likes to cast things off the top of your library. So yeah, again, maybe not for, you know, those really, you know, dedicated let's just say extra turns you know extra combat builds that are just brokenly good but yeah for a more you know just big non-creature spells yeah I, I can definitely see some narcissus considering this brand new card next up though a another kind of a commander that really might want to consider this card is thrix the sudden storm it is a flash flying elemental giant that says spells you cast with converted mana cost five or greater cost one less to cast and can't be countered so thrix is all about big spells and yeah one well, of the multiverse is quite a big spell as well definitely meets that requirement of being you know five or greater so instead of just costing you know eight mana it's going to cost you seven so you get a slight discount there but perhaps more importantly it makes it so that that can't be countered you're just going to be getting your one with the multiverse in play essentially you know guaranteed to happen in that way and then when that is in play when you're casting a spell with it again for free your opponents also can't counter that too as long as that is a massive spell and, and yeah you're going to be cheating out a lot of massive spells with this in play with this commander finally though i mean even depending on the build i mean vega the watcher might want to consider this one as well whenever you cast a spell from anywhere other than your hand draw a card Again, a card like Future Sight, or, you know, one of those kinds of cards like it, can do a ton of work with a Vega the Watcher deck because, yeah, you're going to be casting a lot of spells off the top of your library. So giving yourself another avenue, you know, to be able to do that and also, you know, a high-end, high-impact kind of play to be able to put that down, get access to the top of your library, and not only that, but be able to play other things that are very impactful for free can really help you out with this kind of a value-centric commander. But again, I mean, unlike some of the other commanders that can kind of cheat, you know, out one of the multiverse, definitely keep that in mind, because again, some Vega Watcher decks, you know, are much more low to the ground. So yeah, something to consider. But now, as this episode is coming to a close, it's time for me to give you my final thoughts on one with the multiverse. This is quite the card. I mean... This card can have a massive impact on a game the second it comes down. It's definitely a huge threat, and yeah, your opponents are going to want to try to take it out as quickly as possible. Again, it's a nice blend, I think, of Future Sight and Omniscience kind of meeting in the middle somewhere. Again, it doesn't, you know, just let you cast everything for free, you know, from your hand like Omniscience does, but it does give you access to up your library, and you can cast a singular spell at the top of your library for free each turn, or a spell from your hand, depending on what you need to do, but yeah. This can provide you a lot of value throughout the game. Of course, there are certain commanders out there that are really going to want it, especially ones that can, you know, kind of cheat it out, essentially, and really make the most of a magnificent card like this. But yeah, speaking of magnificent cards, make sure you're on the lookout for even more exciting quick takes and spoilers coming up. And with that, the show is coming to a close, so it's my turn here from you. So in the comments below, let me know what your thoughts on this episode are. And as always, thanks again and have a good one. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. We also have a ton of brand new t-shirt designs in stock, so make sure you check out those as well. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all their support.